The water has arrived in this Vuti marsh after 30 years of absence. It's slowly been pushing and trickling down towards the center of Savuti. All the animals and all the plants in this area really have been through a hard time, a hard 30 years. The whole area is going through a, a constant change and it's going to take quite a lot of time for these animals to readjust to the presence of a river again. A lot of the animals around, like bull elephants and other animals using and frequenting the marsh, they still move between muddy pans where the water is not very good. Even though the river is less than a kilometer from where they are, they still choose to use this old water source. It is going to take a long time for them to readjust and realize that better water has returned. Zebras and wildebeest returning from their migration en route back from Mababi moving through the marsh also use water holes that are provided by the wildlife department of this area, water holes that are pumped. They too don't realize that the river has returned and is just within reach of them. Everything in this environment is going to have to reset itself back to the days of when the Savuti Channel was flowing and the marsh was full of life. What really intrigued me about this pair was that they were really, really boisterous and obviously not taking to the air, which was quite uh, interesting. And it wasn't too long before the reason for all of this boisterous behavior emerged and it was in the form of two tiny little chicks. This was really nice to see. Obviously, these birds are now on the endangered list. It took uh, quite a long time for me to almost establish some kind of rapport with these birds and uh, get them a bit calm with my presence. And I just hung around this one particular area. The chicks quite often bedded down in these big mussel beds and behind these big kelp stems that have washed up on the beach. This is obviously a good food source for these animals. The parents taking these birds down to the water, giving them some of their life skills. At one stage, uh, it got quite interesting. There was another pair of black oyster catchers in the same sort of area, and the parents were really displaying um, some real aggressive behavior. Quite often, they would charge this other pair, and there just seemed to be a bit of a rivalry. You can see the other pair also being quite aggressive, not moving away from the area, so some interesting behavior. A good sign for the west coast and for the population of the black oyster catchers. There's definitely uh, an upturn in these breeding pairs. Just a nice morning on the beach.
close to the camp in which we are situated is this flay. And this is the backdrop to the creatures that I found around the camp today. The first of which was this Cape Girdled Lizard. This armor-like plating that it has, beautiful coloring and of course exceptionally well camouflaged. This reptile was moving to and fro from its nesting area. A very interesting character to watch. Soon after this, uh, I came across a rockagama. Most incredibly beautiful, delicate little feet with those fine little claws on it. Not as colorful as the girdled lizard, but um, also an interesting creature. And right next to the chalets in which we were staying was this African hoopoo. And I wondered exactly what is it that um, helps this bird locate and pinpoint the exact position of its insects. Um, it would find it very, very quickly. And this was a hungry hoopoe, obviously, because um, it was up and down for a long time. I was not prepared for the visit of this little angular tortoise as it rushed past the, <laughs> the hoopoe and down along past him. And all the while, with all these happenings of all these creatures around me, the sun was starting to come out. And yeah, the flay in a very different kind of beauty to our first sighting of it.